Hi everybody, welcome to this Polypad pointer video on prime factor circles. I am Dave Porras from Polypad and I am so excited to have Dan Finkel from Math for Love joining us on this Polypad pointer video. Hey Dan, how's it going? Great, it's great to be here. Yeah, we I'm are excited. super excited to have you and uh, hear about prime factor circles. Do you want to give us just a little overview of your uh, your background with prime factor circles and how they they came to be and absolutely yeah so um so i am uh i'm the founder of math for love and um do a bunch of different stuff producing curriculum and math games and uh children's books and other things um and prime climb was our first game that we ever created um it was a game that kind of came when we were inventing a lot of very quick classroom games. And I had the idea to include a color scheme for prime factorizations that would allow you to see all multiplication and division in terms of combining or removing colors. And uh, thus the prime factor circles in this form that eventually migrated over to Mathagon uh, was born. So this is a game that um, I'll... Um, the box is out there. It's uh, It's been around since 2015. And wow. um, yeah, it's actually been pretty popular uh, around the yeah. world. We've sold 250,000 copies of it at this point, which is pretty exciting. Um, and it features this really beautiful spiral image where you are racing um, in the game to get from zero, your two points from zero to 101 using um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So it's a game that I, frankly, still enjoy playing. Um, Me too. And I go back to it, which is, you know, all you can ask for. Um, yeah. And it's been a really fun thing to share. So uh, there's information on that uh, on our website, mathforlove.com. There's also free lesson plans um, involving it. So if you go to our free lesson library, um, uh, we actually have a... Um, uh, prime climb color chart uh, lesson plan that involves um, showing students these things uh, and then um, coloring in a blank version and trying to do that. So that's, that's awesome. all fun stuff, some good paper handouts if you want them. However, what we're going to talk about today is some of the cool stuff you can do using the version of these that is on Mathagon's Polypad, which... Yeah, uh, awesome. I will say I have a, a fourth grader and a seventh grader, and we love playing the game. There's a lot of strategy involved in the board game. It's not just a game about practicing multiplication or factors. There's action cards, and you got to be strategic in when to use the cards. And my kids beat me more than I'd like to admit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's actually... Yeah. Um, yeah, we really wanted to make a game that was fun enough that kids would not just play it in school during math time, but actually yes. play it at home. And there's a few things like that. The, the landing on prime numbers greater than 10 gives you like a little bonus card, a prime card, and then that mixes things up in some really fun That's ways. That's so great. Um, so here I am on Polypad, and under the number section, we have a category of prime factor circles. So we're going to, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how they work. We'll each share a few examples of how these might be helpful in exploring math with students. So I'm going to take one. I'll take the number 18. I'll add it to the canvas here just with um, a click and drag. And here I can see that there uh, are these two colors, two greens and an orange. And when I click on a color and I pull it apart, I'm pulling out that factor of two. So I can see that 18 is now uh, a two times nine. And I can take this green chunk and pull it out. And I see 18's prime factorization is 2 times 3 times 3. I can put them back together. If I put 2 on top of the 3, it'll find the product of those. And there, 3 times 6 is 18. And I can put it back together and get 18. Um, under the advanced menu here on the prime factor circle, I can click on it and decide what I want as the labels. So right now, it's showing the product of 2, 3, and 3. I could have it show the product and the individual prime factors as well. Or I could set it to none where nothing's shown and is a nice way to have a good conversation with students about what number do you think that is? Um, I'll turn this back on here and I just wanna show you that there is an input field where I could enter any number that I want. So like 2023 um, and I can see it's, it's a purple, which is the seven here. 
right? So when I take this and pull out that the seven is purple, any prime number above seven on Polypad and on the game is this red color. So I see that this is seven times a prime times a prime, but I don't know what those primes are. I could pull this out and I see it's seven times 289, which uh, would be, again, good good conversation for students. I think that's 17 squared. It is oh, 17 yeah. 17. A, so a, really nice, is. a really nice thing to mention is that figuring out what large numbers factor into is a highly non-trivial math problem. It's actually incredibly, incredibly difficult to do that. And it's very computationally expensive. And yeah. so you, you're sort of faced with smaller versions of that, of like, oh, there's this four digit number that's two prime numbers multiplied together. How could you figure out what the prime numbers are? Actually quite difficult to factor. Super fun. Um, yeah. And of course I could like put these back together and like see what happens when I combine all of these on the canvas, which is kind of cool. So there's 36,000. So lots of applications. Um, Dan, do you want to share one idea of where these might uh, add some value to a math? Yeah, so, so there's so much you can do here, but one really nice thing that we get uh, just from looking at these is say, let's say we want to simplify this fraction. So 120 over 168. Now, when I'm simplifying, and the whole idea of simplifying fractions has to do with uh, considering what these are. So I can... Uh, considering the factors and, and how they relate. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 120 and drag that on. So there's my 120, and now I want 168. And what we find here is that just looking at these gives us much more of a sense visually of what's actually happening here. Um, and now we can play with it a little bit. So maybe I will... And actually, just for yourself, right now, maybe you can just already see what this is in lowest terms. But I will drag something out. So maybe I'll take this green sector. I notice, oh, 120 is 40 times 3. I can separate that out, pull that factor out. Oh, there's a 3 here, too. I'll pull that factor out also. Ah, very interesting. If I pull the same factor out of both of them, really, I have 43s over 56 threes. This is a way to figure out what uh, what simplifying these things is. So instead of that, maybe I could do 40 over 56. Is that the same fraction? Let's check Let's and see, see. the balance. Oh, oh yeah, it does. That's really nice. So cool. Uh, could we go further? Well, maybe I could pull a, a two out of both of them also. Ah, interesting. 20 over 28, does that? Still balance? Well, I, I need to I need to change them both. Whoops. That's all right. A little slash on your keyboard. There we go. Right and oh, and that oh. balances also. Um, and in fact, I can really just keep dragging out those factors until I have nothing left that about simplifying fractions or canceling from the numerator and denominator, we can really see uh, those prime factors there. Um, so what I've really done is pulled a 24 out of each of those. I have five 24s over seven 24s, seven uh, 24ths. So I should say seven 24s is actually what I mean. So yeah, that's all good. Five <laughs> sevenths. Uh, I keep going to the wrong place. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and it balances. That balance, yes, it, it does. So, so great. So, um, and and when you get used to this color scheme, it really does allow you to just look at it and see what's going on. So it's even possible that, you know, if I want to change this a little bit, or or if I'm looking at this originally, I might even say like, oh, I see that four yeah. of the factors are the same. This is really five of something over seven of the same thing, and it's so cool as you as you pulled those out. Uh, I've, I've worked with these for a while, as you say. And so I saw, oh, that's five sevenths. Yeah. Right? I, I, I saw the three oranges and the green, and they each had a blue and a purple left over. And certainly that worked well in this example. But my brain doesn't look at 120 over 168 and immediately know it's five sevenths. Some people's brains work that <laughs> way. Mine people, doesn't. 
But in a way, what we're doing is training our brain to see those things because, yeah. right, like you have to play around with these things to even have that become a visible kind of intuition. But what this allows students to do is, yeah, instead of simplifying, like instead of doing laborious work of like, oh, multiply everything together and then to find common factors, maybe they'll be faced with like a numerator, which is a multiplication problem, you know, and to be able to say like, oh, how do you simplify um, 30 times 4 over 21 times 12? You know, some students are going to multiply this all out to get 120 over 168. But yeah. some students will say, oh, well, 4 over 12, that's one third there. You know, but even to go further to say, yeah, I'm going to actually shift these factors around so I can that's really... Nice see where the one is and then see what fraction is not one. And certainly that becomes more and more important as they work with it. With yeah. algebra, yeah, things, like eventually yeah, you're doing totally. with the polynomials and it's very nice to know to have this. Yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah. Awesome. What a great example. I'm going to continue down that road a tiny bit and I'll put the link to this polypad in the, uh, in the description of this video, but here's a similar idea for, for years in my teaching, I, I hate to admit it, I was solely focused on find the greatest common factor. Uh, and But there's so much wonderful math I was missing by f focusing on the greatest common factor. And prime factor circles helped me open my eyes up to like, what are all things that we could explore here? So as Dan was doing with um, 120 and 168, I think it was, I could pull these out. And so the smallest common factor above one is two. So I can enter the two here and I get this green check mark. I've added um, a question builder tile. I'll put a link in the video here, how to add these to your um, polypads. But now I want the largest odd common factor, which I, like the prime factor circles got me to think about cool questions that I could ask, which I've never asked that in, yeah. in, uh, in my middle school teaching. And it might not have the best applications, but I think it's kind of fun to think about. So I don't want to pull out any orange. And I think that the orange one is the only even prime factor. So I could pull out the threes and I could pull out a five and maybe 45 is the largest one. Yeah. And what they both left having, uh, they both have an orange left. In my teaching, I found that kids would often talk about colors with these, which was a good low floor entry into thinking about like the prime factors of numbers. And the largest one here is 90, I think. I just want to show you what happens when I get them all right. I think it's 12 here because I just want to show the confetti that comes down the screen, but I don't have time to do it in this video. If I found all the factors here, all the common factors, here's a visual that I made of all the common factors and like really cool symmetry to explore. You know, I might give students two other numbers to try and have them make a similar list of common factors here, all the ones with one factor and all the ones with two, and all the ones with three, like, why are these the same? What's happening there, right? Why is there the one? Like, so much noticing and wondering there that could happen. And really, this is such a great example of once you have a structure, it, and then you can organize it, and then as soon as you have an organization, you can look for patterns, you can find conjectures, stuff starts happening, yeah. Yeah, it's so great. And, and uh, the tool opens the door up to that, right? It like invites it in in a playful, joyful way that gets to some really deep mathematics. Um, so I think Dan's going to close us out with one last example. And uh, yeah, so here is a uh, here is a, I think just a cool question that is worth exploring. If I look at a number like twelve, um, it has six factors. So I've got four of them here. Two is a factor. Six is a factor. One is a factor. Twelve is a factor. Um, and let me, uh, three is a factor and four is a factor. And you can check on your own that that is actually all of them. That's all the possible factors of 12. Um, so cool. So 12 has six factors. And Dave and I were just talking, what might this do in class if you have students who know about factors and know what they are? Well, you could pick numbers and try to figure out how many factors they have and kind of share them like, oh, you know, I wonder how many factors 18 has. Uh, well, it turns out that will have six factors also. And maybe you'll want to start with one and two and three. Like one has only one factor, two has two factors, three has two factors. Uh, we can kind of go up and try it. That way we can be organized. 
But my question for you is, can you find a number that has exactly seven factors? We've got one with six, two with six. Can we find one that has exactly seven? And really, in general, it's given a number, can you figure out how many factors it has? Is there some nice way to do that? But uh, find one with seven factors is a great way to start that. And I think looking at these, looking at this kind of visualization, being able to pull them apart like this, will start to give ideas about how we might approach that in a much more productive way. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a great question. First person to comment in this video of a number with some seven factors. Well, uh, I'll send you a polypad sticker or something. I don't know. Put your, and, put your and let me say, the let me say there's always it, the answer is always fun, but another thing to consider is especially if you are teaching something like this, is there a good hint you would give? Like I love it. So, cuz you know, the only problem with the answer is that it's sometimes spoiled. So just throwing that yeah. out there. You know, I'm, I'm very interested in the history. It's a, yeah, it's a great it's a great thing to explore. And and I think um, in my experience in working with prime factor circles on Polypad with students, um, that they're like, that question would get them going on Polypad. They, they'd pull numbers out. It's fun to pull them apart and put them back together where maybe that task on, on, uh, on paper and pencil can feel a little laborious, maybe... Uh, it's it's practicing and just finding factors as opposed to um, you know uh, uh, exploring the tool. What did you pull up here while I was? I just talking? wanted to Where mention one more thing. This is something yeah. that I believe is this on. Uh, I believe this is one of I the. I think it yeah. is. Yeah, I think uh, I'll put the link path. in the video comments. Though. Yeah. So, um, but this is really worth looking at. Also, uh, Polypad does have this uh, list of all of the numbers expressed this way from one to one hundred. Oh, um, so cool. And one of the great things you can do with this with students also is just show them this and ask them what they notice and, and what's going on. And it can be such a great conversation starter. And then trying to extend the list. Okay, what is, what do the next 10 numbers look like? Could you figure yeah. that Very, very interesting exploration. That's so great. Yeah, find the next 10. What a great uh, yeah. thing. And that might be good. Like, go do that at a whiteboard, right? Like, we don't want them finding the next 10 on Polypad because they just drag them out. So this would be... Totally. And that's, that's sort of where this one is too, where we yeah, started with exactly. the, the pencil and paper yeah. version. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Dan. This was uh, really enjoyable. So many great teaching ideas. Hopefully those folks that are watching got some ideas of how you could use these tools in your classroom. Um, head uh, yeah. to Math for Love. Yeah. And by the way, if you, if you are using these in other ways, share them because I think it's a super versatile tool. I'm always hearing from people who are sharing them in new ways. So I'm yeah, on Twitter absolutely. at Math for Love. Uh, I'd love to hear what people are doing. Though. Yeah, great. All right. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Yeah.